Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and speak truth to us in our confusion. No, I think I skipped a line. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and suitable in your sight, O God, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Maybe after I just read that prayer, maybe we should just like take a deep breath and start over, like a collective breath, like. <sighs> and I invite you to do that, but not just one. Let's take three deep breaths. I invite you to take a deep breath in the name of God, our creator. <sighs> take a deep breath in the name of Jesus, our redeemer. and take a deep breath in the name of the Holy Spirit, our Comforter. Well, friends, here we are, 10 months into a global pandemic, still living in the aftermath of an extremely divisive election, longing to be together, just to be together, wrestling with the news of Pastor Bill's health and how to care for him and his family when we cannot physically be together. And can I just tell you what I'm missing most at this very moment? You. I'm missing you. I can't see you. I mean, I know that you're there. There are like a whole bunch of people watching us on Facebook, and I know that people tell me they watch on YouTube. I know you're there. I can feel your prayers. But I can't look into your eyes I, and see you looking back at me. And I cannot hug you or high five you as you go in or come out of the sanctuary. I cannot physically be present with you as we, the family of faith at Trinity, enter into a really challenging time together. And not even just challenging, but just really, really hard. So yeah, you need to know that this is hard. And that, gosh, I miss being in this place with you. And it's hard for you. And it's hard for me. And it's hard for us as a community of faith. I shared this with some friends of mine this week. And I said, you know, I don't even think I like any of the scripture readings we've got picked out for this week. I mean, casting out an unclean spirit? Great. Thanks, Common Lectionary and that group of folks who put together the scripture readings that we hear week after week, because even as you, even as I, even as we wrestle with our own unclean evil spirits, which is important to think about and wrestle with, don't get me wrong, what's tugging first and foremost at my heart and maybe yours is how we as a faith community care for Pastor Bill. Like, that's above the unclean spirits. That's above this scripture reading for me. And so I wondered, is this really the scripture reading to share this Sunday? And my friend Anne Marie, she is a wise pastor, she said, yes, Jen, yes, it is the scripture to read this weekend. 
And then, in true Anne Murray style, she reminded me why. The central action of today's gospel lesson is the action of Jesus healing one whom he loves. The central action of today's gospel lesson is the story and is the action of Jesus healing one whom he loves. Casting out an unclean spirit, making this individual clean and whole again. And Jesus does it out of great love for that one individual. My friend Anne Marie is super helpful, by the way. I hope she gets to see this. She also pointed me to Debbie Thomas, who writes this about our gospel reading. Jesus stepped directly into the pain, rage, ugliness, and horror at the heart of this story. He wasn't squeamish. He didn't flinch. His brand of holiness didn't require him to keep his hands clean. He was in the fear, in the sickness, in the nightmare, ready to engage anything that diminished the lives of those he loved. Jesus was in the fear, in the sickness, in the nightmare, ready to engage anything that diminished the lives of those whom he loved. That is powerful stuff. That is the powerful stuff that we, that you and I, need to hear today, that into the fear, the uncertainty, the worry, the questions, and the unknown, that is where Jesus is, today and every day. A few weeks back, I posed the question at Holden Evening Prayer, where do we go from here? That question seems to be even more pressing now than it was a few weeks ago when I asked it aloud. But the answer is still the same. Where do we go? We go to the cross. Where does Jesus meet us? He meets us at the cross. And why is that where we go? Because he loves us. Because of God's boundless, unending, and unconditional love for each and every one of us, Jesus is there. Jesus is here. Jesus rebukes the unclean spirits in our reading today out of love for that individual person. Jesus calls us out of our own evil ways and calls out the spirits within us out of the love for each and every one of us. The love that God has for each and every one of us. Love. That's also at the root of our gospel lesson today, and that's what it's all about. God's love for us, God's love for you, and God's love for me, and how that love draws us into a community together, today and all days. Friends, we are in a dark and challenging and troubling time, but we are in it together. Do you have worries about the future of our nation? Jesus meets you there. Do you have questions and anxiety about your own future? Jesus meets you there. And are you thinking to yourself what the heck is happening at Trinity as we navigate uncharted waters together, caring about our beloved pastor as a family of faith? Well, guess what? That's right where Jesus is. Right here. And not right here in the sanctuary. I mean, Jesus is here in the sanctuary, you know, because it's the sanctuary. So, of course, Jesus is here. But Jesus isn't just here in this space. Jesus is here with us. So Jesus is with you at home. Jesus is with me right here. Jesus is with you if you're watching us in Pennsylvania and wherever you are watching us across the nation. It's not your geographical location, but where you find yourself and your heart today. Jesus is right there. Jesus is right here. I don't have the answers to what comes next. I don't know what happens tomorrow. I mean, you saw me try to forecast the weather. I got, I got nothing. I don't know. Let alone the future of the next few weeks, months, and years. And there are many more questions than there are answers right now. And that is an uncomfortable place to be. It's scary. It's heartbreaking. 
and it is hard. But that is exactly where Jesus breaks in every single time. And as Jesus broke into the man with the unclean spirit, it cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? And Debbie Thomas responds, There's only one answer to that question. Jesus says everything. I have everything to do with you. Wherever your pain is, your darkness is, your torment is, God is. God has everything to do with us, even and maybe especially when we are at our worst. When the shadows overwhelm us, when the demons shriek the loudest, when the hope of liberation feels nothing more than fantasy, that's when Jesus' authority brings the walls down. So maybe together we ask, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? And Jesus says to you and to me and to us, everything. I have everything to do with you because of how much I love you. It's not anything we've done, friends, and thank heavens it's not anything we've left undone. This presence of Jesus, this unwavering presence of God in our lives coming to us in the darkest, hardest places, comes from a God of love. And through this love, we are drawn into community together. And together is where we love. Together is where we cry. Together is where we express joy. Together is where we struggle. Because together, we can do hard things. Together. When you don't have a voice to sing, we will sing for you. When you don't have the words to pray, we will pray for you. And when you don't have the faith to believe, we will believe for you. This is who we are together, as the family of faith, as the body of Christ, as God's beloved children. Drawn in by a God who loves us unconditionally, let us live out of that love. And let us live into that love, facing the unknown together, yet knowing for certain that Jesus will be there because Jesus is already here. Thanks be to God for the gift of you and this community of faith. And thanks be to God for the gift of Jesus. And now may the peace which surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.